Anderson, Griffin, Wilson, and Smith. Oh, <laughs> like a low yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. So we've got one pulled hamstring, oh, four donut burgers. <laughs> now it's time for some fights. <laughs> Amazing nights in Liverpool, great fights, all those boys, huge amount of heart, not a single bad fight on the card, not a single person gave up in any of those fights and some of them were rough, gave me goosebumps at moments when some of those boys came out. It's a bit sad to not see Paddy come through at the end, but dude, that, that kid has no quit in him and all fair play to back the guy he was fighting against. I'm sure they'll both be back and hopefully we'll be back ringside to watch it. But it's a new day and there's new shit going on and now we're about to head to my normal gym to see a not so normal person. So in the gym and in the next 15 minutes, the man we are supposed to be meeting will be appearing. The man I'm talking about is none other than Olympian champion Jay Cutler. But very motivational guy, very successful man, one of the first bodybuilders to really build a fitness empire around himself and become a self-made millionaire. And I think there's a lot of wisdom that this guy can pass on to you guys because he's not only a great bodybuilding good businessman he's an intelligent man he's articulate so fingers crossed we'll get straight with him but more importantly I just I want to get some words of wisdom so sometimes my job just gets a little bit too good and he has to stand next to absolute legends so if you don't know it's Jay Cutler I don't say if you don't know get off the channel start watching now and leave um, welcome to England <laughs> oh, it's always good to be here. I brought the Vegas weather this time, so it's good. So Jay's out doing seminars, so if you're unaware that he does these, he comes and do speeches and talks. I and talk and try to do a little more face-to-face -face with people. I've been at expos for a long, long time. I actually was one of the first ones that took Body Power years ago. And uh, this, this tour has given me the opportunity to stand face-to-face, -face, communicate with people, yeah. spend, like said, a little more time. We, we talked about that. Um, and really kind of tell my story about how I got started and why I did it and what I do now. So it's just more insight on my life, pretty much. And uh, we've traveled all around. We got nine stops total, and two have been knocked out already. So <laughs> I mean, this is what I was talk we were talking about, Jay, before the camera came on about that. How you can get more interactive, learn more about somebody when you let sit and let them talk about what they've done and ask questions. I'm going to do a little bit of that at the end of this. And at the end, we'll answer a couple, three big questions that I think will help you guys out from insight from a, a professional guy who's been one of the most successful bodybuilders ever. In the zone, here we go. In the zone, here we go. In the zone, here we go. Yeah, they know I'm a pro. Let's go, let's go. She just threw up my teeth. What happened? So normally when I train, I take two grams of Himalayan salt before I come training. And I should have done it before. I did it whilst I was in here. I think I took, I put three in the bag instead of two, because Jay's here, so I thought I'd be a big boy. I'm trying to take three grams. I think you just tried too hard. I just tried too hard to impress you. That was the thing. <laughs> and so what I did instead was, I did a quick walk to the toilet, threw up my chicken and sweet potatoes that I had before we came here, and now I'm going to look even flatter than I would have done if I hadn't done it at all. <laughs> Oh, 
when you're doing these on the rear delts, what this is saying was a lot of us tend to overextend, we try and drive back further. By bending the arm and shortening the range in which we can move, we maintain load on that rear delt. Whereas when we extend the arm up and out, we start recruiting traps, uh, other parts of the shoulder, you start hunching up. So if you can keep a shorter, uh, a tighter bend on the arm, it restricts that range of movement to a natural end point, which is here. Well, if you just turn around, you can see it straight away. Just move your arm back. There. Yeah, that's your contraction. Right. As soon as I extend my arm, I can move it way further back. So keep it in bench and find that natural point of contraction. Yeah. Once the rear delt has been engaged properly and it starts to fail, then the burn sets in. You can go to complete and utter failure where you're engaging partial reps and the muscle is still under load even if you're moving at two inches as opposed to the whole range. Um, if you're new to that, start doing them on your final set and you'll, you'll feel it straight away and as you can progress safely you can start adding them into more steps. So it's like a, it's a variation of a, a straight bar from this. Takes out the legs, takes out that body swing, really isolates just their shoulders. So quick addition here, whilst we were doing this, I was getting a little bit of lower back pain doing this exercise and it turned out that I wasn't planting my feet properly. So here you can see I brought my feet up the bench a little bit, chest a little bit higher and that helps flatten off and neutralize that spine. Don't try and lift too high on this, that's also going to help um, because if you try and lift too high, what you're going to do is arch that lower back and that's then going to intrude on the workout. So if you do get a bit of lower back pain, keep your butt high, plant your feet a little higher up the bench and make sure that you're not lifting too high. Focus completely on isolating those front delts. I haven't used this exercise at all really ever and it was one of my favorites from the day so give it a go just got mr olympia putting my weights away for me you know what i mean you know what's really crazy so the first body powers and things when we did them i thought people like jay was still competing at the time i didn't like i schoolgirled in front of him i didn't dare talk to him i just went <laughs> I was, yeah, I, 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 now i get to train with the guy so fucking cool Sorry, anyway, I've got to go because you know Jay's messing this up. I don't got to show him some shit. <laughs> I ain't kidding, someone come and push me down. Let's go, let's go! So we did, I think the first thing you missed that I got with the people was a shoulder press into a lateral raises, into a, front, into a rear delt, into then a front raise, so a shoulder dominant day, followed up with uh, some triceps on the end there. And uh, tales of how, you know, Insta stories, Rocks the other day came in coming in fuck shit, cleaning the fuck shit off her, somewhere the shit somewhere got in my body, and I uh, shit five pounds off in two days, so if you want to get shredded, eat some fox poop. Just about get you on a camera. That's the only time I'll ever look bigger than Jay. Right, you're so closer there. to it. <laughs> okay, so as promised, Jay's kindly, even in his tight state, 
gonna answer a couple of questions, but first of all, I'm just gonna let him reintroduce himself to you guys. If you, a quick load down on how you got going and cool. Yeah, my name is Jay Cutler. I'm a former Olympia champion, uh, former Arnold Classic champ. I've done a lot of great things in the world of bodybuilding, but more importantly, I had a dream and a vision. I started training at the age of 18. And I started training to build a better body. I was going to school for criminal justice, be a police officer, chasing my degree in that. I actually got involved in weights. Used as a stress reliever, got convinced to get on a bodybuilding stage. At the time, there was only men's and women bodybuilding in no other divisions. And uh, we didn't have social media or anything of those channels, no YouTube, any kind of real uh, outlet where we could actually watch and learn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was AOL. Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, that was prior to even all the internet. So I was, uh, I was a magazine person, so I'd pick up scrap magazines at the gym. So I learned how to train at the age of 18 by watching people train and, and getting guided by local people back in Massachusetts. And you know, became a teenage national champion at 19. Did you have a mentor or was this just on your own? Just You know what, I didn't training? have a mentor. I actually picked up a bodybuilding book. I bought it at a local GNC. It was called Beyond Built. It was by Bob Paris, who was an old class, classic bodybuilder. If you look Bob Paris up, great physique, good looking guy. Uh, he wrote a book and it was an instructional book. So I learned how to learn. I learned all the exercises from that book. Yeah. At 16, I read that and then I didn't join the gym until I was 18. So I kind of had a vision and a, a knowledge of kind of weights. But so when I did join the gym, I knew kind of what to do, but I still followed the lead of all the local people and the ma what the magazines kind of displayed to me. And I, I advanced rather quickly. I had great success. Everyone always asked me what was my motivation in the beginning. It was because I it here. was because I saw progress. And I think every day we go in the gym, and you can watch yourself change in front of the mirrors. And I think progression is the most motivating thing to people like seeing my arms get bigger and my chest get bigger and my legs especially the body parts that I never weren't really an outstanding body parts I already had like stocky legs and everything growing up as a football player but you know I watched my arms get bigger and of course my chest and then my back started getting wider from doing all the pull-ups which I still think is the best exercise tips to everyone out there watching. Body weight? Yeah, body weight body pull-ups. Pull uh, you know, wide Tough grip. one. You get guys that can do heavy weights and but, can't do the pull-ups. But three times a week, I would always suggest doing the wide grip pull-ups if you want that great beat taper. So, um, you know, I, I just advanced and started competing, had great success, teenage national champion, pro at 23, and worked my way up to the top, eventually winning Olympia titles, and uh, now being someone of, uh, like, that kind of iconic... Uh, yeah. It's weird to like, think of yourself like that. Yeah, I mean, weird, or is it kind of sunk in now? This point, you kind of. I kind of realize now because people look to me for motivation, and uh, like we showed you before. Yeah, it's right one, there. Of, one of my best showings, 2009. That was. Uh, so people look to me for motivation based based on what they saw in my life, and that is kind of awkward to me because I was just selfish trying to be the best body in the world. Little did I know, I would build a huge fan base that followed me along from all over the world. So here I'm in the UK, collaborating with people like you, who aren't necessarily competing on a bodybuilding stage, no. but on a different platform, which is you know the social media, YouTube. I think that is the beauty of the bodybuilding, is that you don't have to be competitive to want to be competitive in it, but not necessarily to get on a stage, but within yourself, with that motivation in the mirror, like you're saying. Um, it's, a great, it's a great way in for anyone to come and train, because you don't have to be good at the start. Like where if you want to, like you say, you were playing football, you either you got it or you're cut. In the gym environment, there's always someone there to help you. There's always something you can progress in, and you, as long as you're progressing, like you said, that is enough motivation to keep going. I mean, and listen, man, you don't have to be a big star. You started somewhere. I started on the smallest stages, like at a local show at a local church back in Worcester, Massachusetts, with like 25 people in a show. Yeah. But you fucking did it. And I went to the biggest yeah. platform. So it just goes to show we all start off at the same place. So people watching that think, oh, I'm in a small town and no one ever knows me. Like, man, you gotta, you got to get out there and chase it. And listen, tell your story and be yourself. Act yourself on camera. Your, your videos or what you do will get traction eventually. And, and being you in that video. Yes. This is the big thing. Just because this is in front of you, don't... Hey. Don't change who you are to be in front of a lens because you watch somebody else and you're trying to be that person. Because that's not the, that's you're always going to be struggling to ever reach your potential when you're trying to be something that you're not. And I think you said, like you said, when we were talking before training, you were saying, you know, how I'm asking Jay, I'm saying, like, do you find you do this on this movement that? He's going, feel it. Yeah. How does it feel? Does that feel the way to you? Because not everyone's the same. So you can take advice from Jay, but you have to adapt it to yourself in whatever you do. So um, in terms of that way of thinking, I, I grew up watching you. 
like um, through all those Olympias, watching like we're talking about the Swallow Monkey, yeah, yeah. all those productions, which was YouTube pre stuff, yeah. YouTube explosion. You hunt those. I think you've reloaded a lot of those. No, on but the I, they're still the on the school. channel, my J Color TV channel. So, yeah. you, you search deep into the videos, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see some really. Really shitty quality videos, yeah. And those are my swole monkey that we filmed on, like the handheld that you did, like the old videos with the family back in like 1980s. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that shit was filmed. But on they're that. real. They're so fucking real. Uh, and that's what we grew up watching. It's like, so Jay learned from magazines. I learned from magazines. Then I was in that crossover of the internet era, coming in watching the swole, the Jay Color TV with swole monkey productions, and. Um, so we've come so far, but now bodybuilding is obviously transgressed. Everything's started getting big. I think when you were on there, was the, the, we had the size and the balance. And I think it crossed a little too far, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Everyone started kind of trying to hold too much mass on the frames. Yeah, and even there. I did. I'm, 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 uh, I was a victim of that too. Also. When you came in on that small, that 255, you're yeah. saying, was that the ultimate, that iconic picture of Jay hitting the, that the leg pose? Stuff, yeah. Everybody knows it. It'll come up on the screen now. Um, that wanted to ask on that was that whole era and this is a big thing that people talk about the way it is waistlines um, how did you come in from having that bigger thicker frame set to literally creating that that smaller waistline and coming in because you yourself probably said that was one of you you know this is the way I'm built I have the wider waist but you still managed even so to bring that you know. I mentioned to you I competed I won my first Olympia 273 so I came down in body weight you know the training the eating became a little less yeah um, my focus wasn't to be as big remember when I won the Olympia in 06 2006 I was better than the biggest bodybuilder ever Ronnie Coleman yeah he stepped away and when I was able to compete in 2009 and come back to beat Dexter Jackson he was a smaller bodybuilder so I was able to come in a lot tighter and smaller and I think that was a better I always said my best is at 255 even though I won all the way up to 273 yeah. or whatever I have a big swing of, of how I looked my best and people have different opinions right but I think more importantly the ideal physique for me was in the 50s with five foot nine uh, and it just goes to show uh, you know guys are just competing too heavy still nowadays yep. you'll look at the Olympia lineup this year that's coming up in a couple weeks and I, I you'll see a lot of guys that are just too damn heavy yeah and I did ask on, online whilst I training on the Insta stories I put on their questions you wanted to ask and this crosses over one of the guys asked do you think there's now like a, a dysmorphia in bodybuilding of what the guys are seeing themselves when they look in the mirror? So they're kind of missing this distension of the, the midsection of for looking because they're only looking at the overall size? Or do you, think, do you think it needs somebody to step in there? And well, really I think what happens is these guys say, well, I'm going to lose the, the belly like the last week because it's, they say, well, my stomach's bloated, but once I lose that water and stuff, the stomach's going to come out. Come on, man. Like, yeah. You shouldn't be that bloated. I mean, I was a 300 pound bodybuilder in the off season and that was too big. I was chasing Ronnie, but it wasn't necessary. 280 was a good off season weight. I dropped 30 yeah. pounds, you know, 25 pounds, get ready for the show. Remember 15 pounds was water anyway, um, but 10 pounds of fat. So uh, off season pre-contest, I still kind of ate the same things, but I just think that the physiques have gone a little far and that's why, you know, I do favor the new divisions. You know, we yeah. talked about that. I think that was one of yeah. the questions. Was, yeah, one of the questions was the, f the future of bodybuilding and what you think of like the new physique divisions that's really taken hold I think now. it's awesome. You know, I promote yeah, shows too. and I think, you know, I'm a fan of like the Jeremy Buendias and um, obviously, you know, Danny Hester, we go way back. He won the classic Mr. Olympia yeah. first year He's and then, then Breon won shape. last year yeah, and then you got you got uh, you know Chris Bumstead, who's fucking yeah, amazing. So. Uh, Reagan Grimes, who I think is like kind of like on the. Yeah, I think yeah. he's on the crossover between you See, know, men's physique. What do you think of the classic? Do you think this is going to be a future? A I think future it's going to be a huge future. I still never think it's going to overtake the big no. bodybuilding size. Yeah. You're still going to have the Mr. Olympia as the big prize, but I do think the classic guys are going to get more reputable yeah. and more because listen, we all train the same. Jeremy Bundy is fucking killing it right now. With yeah. all his social media, you'll see what he does. Dude, he's training legs. He's squatting four plates. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's doing the weights that these top pros are using, getting ready for the Mr. Olympia. Yeah. So you can't take anything away from those guys. They're still peeled downstairs. Yeah. yeah. Just because they're wearing board shorts doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But the classic guys, you know, it's just a little more streamlined. It's where it's kind of to bring the whole bodybuilding side back, too. You're going to see bodybuilding is going to shift and you're going to have guys that are going to be a little more aesthetic, even the open class. I think it's going to help our whole business. I think we saw that with Roly in the last yep. show he won. He's, he's midsection's tight yes. now coming in. So you've, you've pulled away now from the bodybuilding, you stepped off the stage. Um, in terms of like being your own motivation for business and still training and staying in shape, once you've not, not got that, because it was an extreme goal, wasn't it? I mean, it was the, the hardest thing to do in the world in this sport. So now you stepped away, but you're still in amazing shape and have been, because I remember when you stepped away and you've stayed in this condition, even afterwards, going on. So what kind of keeps that fire going? 
So for people at home who don't aren't looking for stage but want to and, and lose and drop off the wagon all the time, it happens. It's a question yeah, Lex, like I, I just love the fucking train, man. It's just in you. I love to train. The best part of my day is still going to the gym. Like all the great things I do, and like you know, I have great business, and like I'm doing this huge tour right now through the UK, which I'm so excited about to go out and see everyone and be face to face with everyone. And like I just love fucking training, man. Yeah. Like that was my passion. Like when I joined the gym at 18, like I, I just that's all I wanted to do was train. I used to train three hours a day. I cut back now to like 30, 40 minutes an hour max. I still do my cardio every morning. So I'm in the gym still like twice a day, even okay. without being competitive. So cardio session yeah, I do cardio session, session and a weight session just because I like it for my mind. Uh, but it makes it really easy because number one, I still want to have a, a athletic build, but also I still want to motivate people and show people like even after retirement, like here's, this is why I did this. This is why I became a pro bodybuilder. It wasn't to chase only the prizes and win money and do yeah. whatever. I really truly love to train. And I fortunately found bodybuilding because someone coaxed me into competing. I probably never would have competed. <laughs> yeah. I was nervous to get on stage. I didn't know what it was about. I never thought I could be that guy. But I, I learned that side and I became great at it, but now I stepped away and I still do what I love to do and that's work out. And, I mean, motivate people like yourself. I mean, I'm going all around the world and motivating people. What I, better payoff? You can this give me it. all the Olympia prizes and everything I ever won. You know, I've won cars and amazing trophies, you know, three, four Sandow trophies, yeah. three Arnold Classic trophies. And man, like, being an inspiration to people is like, there's no pride, there's no like, yeah, the help nothing involved helps. with that. You yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, it's it's just awesome. And I'm, I'm happy to be able to do it and I'm just gonna keep doing it until I'm, uh, I can't actually lift any more <laughs> weights. And that's, I think that the moral of the story is if you love something, you're gonna wanna do it. So do what you love. If it's not bodybuilding in the gym, but you still like the gym environment, find that, that version of training that you love. Because the reason Jay still looks where he does and the way he, and the, he was so good at what he did is because he loved, it had a it real passion. passion. It was passion. Yeah. I always use yeah. that. You can't do anything successfully if you're not passionate you say, you about it. You can't fake passion. Yes. And that, that is too true. So a uh, huge thank you for doing this. I know you had a long day. I really no, appreciate right, it. Man. I was, I'm very happy and honored. And uh, Are there, is there a link that people can go to to find your tour dates, tickets and things like uh, that? Yeah, too? just the Jay Cutler Instagram, at Jay Cutler. But uh, you know, my my YouTube channel will display a lot of this stuff too. We'll follow up on, on the videos and hopefully some of this stuff at Jay Cutler TV on Perfect. YouTube. And All be linked in the description below. So make sure to check that out. And check out, go dig in those archives. Find those videos of Jay from the golden era. It will honestly motivate you more than anything. And it's what we all grew up doing. And like Jay said, it doesn't matter what you do, do it with passion. Thank you all for joining us. Check those links below. Go give Jay some love, and we'll catch you in and, the next one. And thank you for the great secret tips. He does have some secret tips, guys. <laughs> so stay tuned for those more on his channel. Thank you. Jay is where he is because of people like me. <laughs> <laughs>